Okay, great. Well, thank you again for being here. I want to echo Abby and say thank you so much for taking your personal time to be here. We're going to try to keep our remarks brief, as brief as we can, because we really want to hear from you. So, but what we do want to do is give you some background on what we've been doing and what we're going to be doing so that you have the best information available. So really, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management is a bureau within the U.S. Department of the Interior. We manage the mineral and energy resources of the Outer Continental Shelf. That really begins at the three nautical mile line and goes out to the 200 nautical mile EEZ. So it's quite a lot of land to manage. On the Atlantic, what you're going to know us for really is renewable energy and then marine minerals. So um, like aggregate, sand and gravel for beach replenishment. We have a very deliberate process, like Abby was saying, uh, for our renewable energy authorization process. Uh, it's phased, and it's phased for a reason. So even the planning and analysis phase in itself is phased. So uh, we began back in 2010. We formed our intergovernmental task force. And really what that is is it's a body of governmental bo uh, entities that have some role to play in the OCS, in renewable energy and the OCS. It's your federal, state, local, and tribal government agencies elected officials. And we formed that in 2010. We received an unsolicited nomination in 2011 from NIPA, and we proceeded down the path. And I'll get to that more in a moment. But the leasing and the planning analysis is really the phase where we identify an area that could be suitable for leasing. So um, working with that task force, exchanging information, and then moving forward with identifying an area for environmental analysis. And so that was our area identification stage, which just wrapped up in March for New York. The, we're about to enter our leasing stage, and we have a proposed sale notice right now that we out, have out in the public for comment until August 5th. And that notice is basically requesting feedback on the area that we're proposing and the lease terms and conditions in addition to the auction format and auction procedures. Moving from the PSN, the proposed sale notice, to the FSN, there will be a final sale notice later this year and then moving to an auction, because we know we've established that this is a competitive area. There are a number of uh, agent, or, um, companies that are interested in participating in this auction. Once we issue a lease, there's another phase, and that's the site assessment phase. They have a preliminary term of 12 months where they go out and they do their surveys, they gather information, and then they submit a plan. That plan typically is your site assessment plan, and that would be when the company deploys a MET buoy or a MET tower, and they gather site-specific wind or wave data. So that phase really informs the next phase, which would be full-scale development, and that would be informed by another plan, which is our construction and operations plan. So it's really a very deliberate process and a lot of opportunities for public feedback and input. And this is just the very beginning of that process. So to give you a snapshot of where we've been so far, we've actually been doing quite a lot. We received our authorization in 2005, it was the Energy Policy Act to, to oversee renewable energy on the outer continental shelf. We promulgated our regulations in 2009, on Earth Day, actually. And we've issued a number of leases so far. I believe it's 11 leases to date. We've had six competitive auctions. And you can see here in the Northeast that we have a number of leases just within the neighborhood of New York. We have two leases offshore Massachusetts. We have two leases offshore Rhode Island. Some of you may be familiar with the Block Island Wind Project. We were involved in the cable uh, review of that project. We also have the Cape Wind Project. Uh, moving down the coast, we have two leases off of New Jersey that we issued the most recently. We have a lease off of Delaware, a lease off, two leases off of Maryland. And uh, moving even further down the coast, we're about to get to our proposed sale notice phase for North Carolina for an area offshore Kitty Hawk. We also are identifying an area off of South Carolina, and that would be, we're in the call for information and nomination stage, so early on in that process. And then uh, moving even further down the coast, we have a potential research lease off of Georgia and a research lease off of Florida for marine hydrokinetics. So quite a lot of activity. This is uh, certainly not limited, this excitement is certainly not limited to New York. So specific to New York, where have we been? What have we done? So I, I alluded to this before. We formed our task force in 2010. It's now 2016. This has certainly been a uh, very thoughtful and deliberate process getting to the stage we're at now. We received our unsolicited commercial nomination in 2011, which was amended in 2012. 
we issued our very first notice, the request for interest in 2013. And what that did is it gave us a sense of, is there commercial interest in this area, which there was. We also gathered a lot of information about the area that we could use to inform later phases. The call for information nominations was the second notice we issued, and that was also in a, in a, uh, issued at the same time as a notice of intent to prepare an environmental assessment. So that was, there, those again were two more vehicles where we could gather additional input into our planning process. We identified the area and announced it in March. And now we're in the phase where we're gathering even more data and information on the proposed sale notice and our environmental assessment. Both of those are on our website. And at the end of this presentation, I'll, I'll point out how you can comment on that. If you don't want to comment here, uh, you can certainly go home and submit comments online or you can mail them in. Uh, there are a variety of ways. We also have comment cards and you can record your comments, of course. We're aiming to have our final sale notice in October because we're on track to have our auction by the end of the year. That is a, a big priority for this bureau and uh, we're targeting December for that. So what is in a proposed sale notice? Well, we describe the area for leasing. We discuss the fiscal terms. We charge a rent. We, we need to get fair return for the nation in any land right that we issue. So we charge rent and other, and other fees, such as an operating fee when a wind facility is built. We have a payment schedule as, uh, as another component. We also talk about how are we going to auction this area? What are, the, what are the mechanisms we're going to use? So that's discussed. We also talk about milestones and deadlines for the bidders that would be per participating. And we have performance requirements. And those are usually, those are housed in our lease. So we have a lease with a number of components. And here you can see the components of our lease include the lease form, which is a legal contract between us and the, and the developer. We also have several addenda, which specify different aspects of that lease. So addenda C would be the addendum where you have a lot of your environmental mitigation, for instance. And those would pertain to the types of activities that we're authorizing at this stage. And that would be your site assessment, your, your site characterization, excuse me, your survey activity. Again, just to reiterate, a lease does not authorize anything other than plan submittal. They can go out, they can do their surveys, they can't actually build anything, because that happens later. We actually, we, we receive those plans and we have to review those plans and then we approve them. And we can approve them, we can approve them with conditions or we can reject them. So we have a number of options available to us. So this is the area we're looking at and I have a larger map coming up but uh, we have a lease number associated with this area. We have, a, uh, we have 81,000 acres, 81,130 acres. At closest point to shore, it's 11 nautical miles from Long Beach, and it's 16 nautical miles from Sandy Hook, New Jersey. The uh, average water depth is about 24 to 42 meters, and we, so far to date, we've received seven expressions of commercial interest. So this is our area on a nautical chart for those of you who operate vessels or uh, do re recreational boating. Uh, you would be familiar with this and it gives additional information about the area. And we have maps in the back of the room too if uh, later during the meeting or even you know take a break during the meeting if you want to take a look. You can take a closer look at what we're actually offering here, proposing to offer. So a uh, just to reiterate the lease terms, so we issue the lease. So that could happen early 2017. We issue the lease, they execute it. The next step is that kicks off a clock of 12 months. They have a preliminary term. The company can go out and survey and learn more about the area. And then that informs the plan submittal and they would submit that. And typically that would be a site assessment plan. And that would propose a met tower, a meteorological tower or a meteorological buoy. And that would gather information about the area, site specific information. That kicks off another term when we approve that plan, if we approve that plan. That kicks off another term of five years. That's called your site assessment term. And that's when the company can go out and install their MET tower or deploy their MET buoys and gather wind and wave data. They can uh, gather additional data about what wildlife might be in the area. And they have to submit their next plan. If they want to proceed toward a commercial facility, they submit their next plan, and that's six months before the end of that term. So about four and a half years into the site assessment term, they submit a construction and operations plan, and that would lay out all of the specifics of how they intend to move forward with a full-scale wind facility. 
and we would review that very carefully. We're actually going to do an environmental impact statement on that, and Kevin, or, uh, Brian can talk more about that in a moment. And uh, we will have more public engagement during that period as well, where you'll hear more about what's being proposed and what's being analyzed. And then at the end, so assuming we approve that plan with conditions, that would kick off the next phase, and that would be your operations term. And that's typically 25 years. We're proposing 25 years. We've asked for feedback on that, whether or not that should be extended for New York. Uh, we've extended it for other states. For Virginia, for instance, we extended it to 28 years. So every and all aspects of the proposed sale notice we're looking for feedback on. So that would be one uh, item to, uh, to comment on. And then, of course, there's a decommissioning plan. A lot of people have concerns. Could the company just walk away? No, they can't. They have to submit a decommissioning plan. We have to approve it. Uh, and if, for instance, if the company were to go bankrupt, we have a bond to cover that. We would be gathering a bond. So um, we are protected and the ocean is protected. So recent outreach. We've been doing a lot of outreach associated with this proposed sale notice because we want to hear from you. We want to hear from the public. So this started, I, I'm just going to detail our most recent outreach. I won't go back to, I won't bore you with going back to 2010. But we had our last task force meeting at the end of April out on Long Island. And we've had five EA meetings, uh, meetings associated with our environmental assessment. And we actually visited a variety of places to do that, to reach out to a variety of stakeholders. We went to New Jersey, we went to Hempstead, two locations on Long Island. We went to the Hamptons, we went to Narragansett, Rhode Island, and we went to New Bedford. And that just wrapped up actually on Monday. And we gathered quite a lot of feedback, which we'll be processing when we get back to the office. We also sent representatives to the Mid-Atlantic Fisheries Management Council in mid-June and the New England Fisheries Management Council to present about what we're proposing that we're doing and what the next steps are and to gather feedback. We also met with the maritime community, with the, the vessel pilots and the uh, vessel operators. We met with them on June 15th to gather information from them because they do have concerns. So in terms of our next steps, so we have these two comment periods, like Bennett was saying. We have a 30-day comment period that closes first, and that's on our environmental assessment. That'll be closing on July 6th. So that's definitely a date to be watching out for. That's next week. We have a proposed sale notice comment period that's a little bit longer, and that goes until August, August 5th. And that would be the last chance for new companies to submit qualification materials if they want to participate in the auction. We also will be, so after that, we'll be finalizing company qualifications. So any new companies that want to be bidders, we'll be reviewing those and processing those and processing all of the feedback that we've gotten in all of these meetings and uh, over the docket, uh, over regulations.gov and in the mail. We'll be processing those, analyzing it, reviewing it, and looking at whether we need to make refinements to any of our notices or our lease package. And then we'll be developing our final sale notice which would lay out the terms and conditions we're offering and it, that we will be offering in the auction. And that'll also include the deadlines and milestones for bidders. We'll be m then moving forward with a number of deadlines for the companies themselves. They have to submit forms, they have to submit a bidder's financial form to set up their account, and they have to submit a bid deposit of $450,000. And then we'll hold a mock auction so they can learn about how the auction will, will work, and then we'll proceed to the lease sale. And that, again, we're targeting for the end of the year. So here's my contact information. I've sadly run out of business cards from all of the meetings we've been holding. But uh, here's my contact information. We'll be making these slides available on the website. I'm happy to talk to you at any time if you have any question. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what question. Feel free to give me a call or email me. Uh, we also have a wealth of information on our website. If you go to boem.gov, click on Renewable Energy Program. You can click on State Activities. You can look at everything we've been doing in every state. We're also involved in the Pacific Coast. So we're looking at renewable energy out there as well, Hawaii, California, all along the Atlantic. So we have a lot of information on our website if you want to learn more. We also have our regulations on the website. We have a number of uh, guideline documents. So feel free to explore that. And then if you're interested in commenting when you, when you leave this meeting, if you want to submit comments, uh, here's a little bit of information about how to do that. And we'll be leaving this up during the Q&A session. So you'll have an opportunity to, to write this down. So that's it. Thank you.